Well, good morning and welcome wherever you are, and a happy and holy Christmas to you all. We connect together for a short time to focus on the heart of Christmas, the gift of the Christ child, born that we might be born again. So let us pray. Loving God, whose love has been shown in the birth of Jesus, help us this Christmas to find time to let your love to speak to us, that we may respond in trust and adoration and make room in our lives to receive your grace and joy and peace. Amen. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, King of Peace. To you be praise and glory forever. The new light of your incarnate world gives gladness to our sorrow and a presence in our isolation. Fill our lives with your light until they overflow with gladness and praise. Blessed be God forever.
Well, I love lists. I love making lists, to-do lists, shopping lists, Christmas lists. I sometimes even have lists of my lists. Don't know whether you're like that. Here's a few lists that some young children have written to Santa this Christmas. This is from Carla, aged eight. Dear Santa, please bring me a dog, a cat, loads of sweets, and no more homework ever. I like that one. And then George, age 10. Dear Father Christmas, don't know why they make me send you this letter because you know what I want anyway. A drum kit, a giant cockroach, and a sniper's rifle. P.S. Don't get my sister anything this year. She's a right pain. And then finally, from Sophie, aged seven. Dear Santa, please can I have a teddy bear this Christmas and nothing else. Love, Sophie. P.S. Can Teddy please have a large plasma TV and an iPhone 12? Thank you. Well, one Christmas, um, fairly recently, I wrote uh, three lists and the same present for the same person was on each list and this is why. I bought someone really close to me a lovely box of chocolates. I brought them back home and then somehow I ate them all. So I went back down to Derby and I bought another lovely box of chocolates for that person very near to me. Brought them home and then sadly I ate them as well. So a few days later I went back down to Derby, I bought that person very close to me the same box of chocolates and I had a great idea this time. I wrapped them up as soon as I got home, put them under the tree. Somehow, uh, you know where I'm going, I ate those chocolates as well. So I decided to get Zoe some smellies instead. And to be honest, they tasted rotten. Uh, only kidding. Just in case you've eaten too much chocolate already this Christmas, I had a Facebook post just for you. It goes like this. The more you weigh, the harder you are to kidnap. Stay safe, eat chocolate. Well, our reading from Luke's Gospel mentioned a list. Uh, Luke writes, in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. And of course, a census is just a list of the people living in a particular country. And it was that list that got Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem where Jesus was born. And of course, his birth there fulfilled an ancient Old Testament prophecy from Micah chapter five, verse two. Now our reading from Luke doesn't mention that Mary and Joseph had a list, but if they did, I think the first thing on their list would have been this, get to Bethlehem, find a place to stay. And that, of course, was necessary because Mary was going to give birth there. But Luke writes this, Mary gave birth to her firstborn and wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. How sad was that? And of course, that's so true of many people nowadays. They get focused on all the trimmings of Christmas and all the fun and the food and the gifts, but they forget to make room for the greatest gift of Christmas, Jesus, God coming to earth to show us how much God loves us. Well, I'd like to end this short talk with another list. It's a list somebody sent me on Facebook. And it goes like this. Buy presents becomes be present. That's a great challenge, isn't it? That's what people want of our time. So this Christmas, I encourage you to be present for someone else. God was present for us in Christmas 
For Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. Secondly, wrap gifts becomes wrap someone in a hug. Well, that may need to be a virtual hug this Christmas because of COVID-19 and the new Omicron variant. Send somebody love and best wishes and so create something of profound worth in their life this Christmas. And then thirdly, send gifts simply becomes send peace. I encourage you to pray for peace in the world, in all the troubled places this Christmas. And remember Bethlehem in your prayers too. Be a peacemaker. Maybe you want to be reconciled to someone, a family member or a friend this Christmas. And then shop for food becomes donate food. The local food bank which I run has been overwhelmed this Advent and Christmas with financial and food gifts to all of you who have given in support. My heartfelt thanks. And it was lovely to see the smiles on some children's faces this Christmas who otherwise would have had so little. And then finally on this Christmas list, see the lights becomes be the light. Jesus is the true light that came into the world to shine a light into the world's darkness. And he said of himself, I am the light of the world. So my encouragement to you is this Christmas, open your life, the inn of your life. Allow Jesus in to fill you with his light that no darkness can ever extinguish and allow that light, the Christ light, to shine from you through your words and how you live and so make the world a better place. I don't know whether God has a list of those he loves in his back pocket, but if he does have a list like that, then your name is on it. May you know God's joy and peace and presence this Christmas time and always. Amen. I'd like to wish you a very happy and holy Christmas. Amongst all the activities of this Christmas, may you open your life to the possibility that the Christ child and his faith, hope and love may be born in you. And the blessing of God Almighty, 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.